my name is Asher Fall, and I did this project for my English class. Okay. Um, my exhibit shows pictures of everyone that was born because my great grandfather survived. He survived by working in Berthold Bates's oil factory after the Ukrainians came to the factory and hid in bunkers in the Carpathian Mountains. After the Russians liberated him, he was supposed to go to the Russian army to clear mines, but he got papers and he didn't have to. After the war, he after the war, he went to a DP camp where he married his wife and had my grandmother. Civil rights movement, and we have the history of it, starting from the 15th Amendment to different marches. And throughout, we have many events that help change the civil rights history and their movement. So here we have the Jim Crow laws that help. Well, it was pretty bad. It's pretty bad for African Americans because they didn't have equal. Um, they didn't have equal things happen to them, and they were separate but equal, which is not really true. And then we have Rosa Parks here. And then we have the bus boycott, which they, I think it was 220,000 people didn't go on the bus to support the bus equality. And yeah, there are 40,000 of them, and they would walk, and it lasted for a year. So they didn't use buses for a year to show equality. And then we have Martin Luther King here and his I Have a Dream speech, which changed history. And then here we have the march that helped show they did this successfully. So I did a Jokosi system, which is a system in Ghana, Africa. And the system is that if any family member sins, like cheats or lies or steals, then they have to send a, a young virgin girl from their family to the shrine where the, they become a slave to the priest, to the gods, to the shrine, for until they, until they die, for the rest of their life. The only way they can get liberated is if the family pays a certain amount of money to get them back. The family usually doesn't, because they believe that by sending the girls to the shrine, they appease the gods. They believe that if they get the girl back, then the gods will curse them with death, disease, etc. So they are usually now, so they are sent, basically stay in the shrine for the rest of their life. So here I have a priest holding a shrine priest holding one of the Trokosi girls. She's faceless because I try to get all the Trokosi girls to become one, to become as if they don't matter, as if they're all the same thing. And she's wearing a um, Ghanaian seti dress, which is it's one Ghanaian seti, which is the lowest form of money in Ghana. So they try. So she's treated as if she's just an object form of money, and she's treated as if she's worth almost nothing, as if she's the lowest of the low. So and this practice is still going on today. about the French city of Le Chambon sur Lignan, who was a Protestant city who helped save Jews from the Nazis. They started in 1940 and went all the way to 1944 and saved like an estimated 5,000 people in total. So here we have the town doctor, Dr. Roger Lee Forrester, giving a Jew a fake identification paper. So everyone who's wearing blue in my presentation is Jewish. Because they made it so hard to tell that anyone was Jewish because they gave them fake identification, fake ration cards, and everything. So here is a classroom that just has Jewish children in it because the children, they were still able to go to class. Everyone did have to go to Protestant religious services, though, uh, so that they wouldn't arouse any suspicion. But they did have secret Jewish services every, like, as often as they could. Um, so, in 1943, the Germans stopped telling the city when they would come in and do an inspection. So, this caused some Jews to have to hide further out into the mountains. So, this is a mother and her son hiding in, the in like a cave in a mountain. Um, there was a committee, SIMAID, which is the abbreviation, it's in French, um, that helped move people from... Uh, France across the border through a tunnel to Switzerland which is a neutral country so they would be safe there. Um, in 1943 and 1944 some people did get caught. There were five students and a teacher, the principal, that got sent to a camp and also the physician got sent to a camp and got executed. Um, the two leaders of the whole operation 
um, were sent to a French camp for 28 days, but then they were released. But they heard a rumor about them maybe being put back into the camp, so they were so they went into hiding, and one of their wives ran the whole thing until the war ended in 1944.